Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to take a 10,000 foot look at bluffing with you. Because seriously, bluffing is a majorly important skill set. Anybody can wait around, try to catch a big hand, and try to get paid off. Doesn't take a bunch of skill to do that. But knowing how to bluff, and more importantly, when not to bluff, is a major differentiator between good players, winning players, and break-even players at the end of the day. Plus, your average hand misses a ton of the time. Even ace-king, the strongest unpaired starting hand preflop, is still going to have just ace-high on the flop about two-thirds of the time, which means we really need to know how to play things like high card and weaker draws in order to make profit in this game. So with this in mind, what I want to kind of show you here today are the four basic building blocks of looking at bluffing and what you need to be looking for in your future sessions in order to make sure that your bluffs are more profitable. First is the break-even percentage. And I know math might be a little bit scary at first, but I promise you this is very, very simple and you can actually memorize quite a few of these to make your life a billion times easier at the table. But essentially the break-even percentage lets us know based upon the size of bet we make or the size of raise that we make, how often does our opponent need to fold in order for us to find an outright profitable play, meaning that it's just snap profit right that moment. The formula for break-even percentage is risk divided by risk plus reward where risk is our bet or raise size, and the reward is what's in the middle right that moment. And to make your life a billion times easier, here are the three that you 100% need to memorize because these are based on the most common bet sizes that we tend to make. Half pot, two-thirds pot, and full pot bets. So the first one you need to memorize is for a half pot bet, which is simply 33% break even, right? We are risking one unit to win two units. One divided by three equals 33%. If we bet two-thirds pot, that's 40% break even. And if we bet full pot, again, risking one unit to win one unit, then we have a 50% break even. Please, please memorize these. Because more often than not, you're gonna be making bet sizes that are in these ballparks. So at least if you have these memorized, you are always have a starting point in real time for being able to say, okay, based upon this size, what is the break-even percentage? And then we can start going further from there, as we'll show you in a moment. So the break-even percentage is essentially saying this. If your opponent folds less than that number, then you are making a bet that outright loses you money. If your opponent folds more than that, then you are making a bet that is outright profitable. And if something is outright profitable, that means you could bluff with a Pikachu and a Charizard card and still expect to make profit. Your opponent is folding more often than the break-even percentage, and this is something we want to be very, very focused on at the table. So if we look at this example where Hero decides to bluff on the turn for a pot size bet, $92 into a $92 pot, we know that the break-even percentage is 50%. Now the second piece of the puzzle is thinking about our opponent's folding frequency, right? We take the break-even percentage, which lets us know how often they need to fold, and then we compare that to the folding frequency to say, okay, does this bluff rate to be bad, good, or great? Simply put, we do very well when the folding frequency is higher than the break-even percentage, and we crush when that gap is very, very large. A quick way to get the folding frequency is to use a tool like Flopzilla when you're studying hands away from the table. It will definitely take some time and some practice, but the more you do this stuff off table, the easier it is to build a solid hypothesis in real time and have a much better starting point. Seriously, if you just spent like 15 minutes a day using Flopzilla, just working through a couple of hands here and there, after a couple of weeks, you would notice huge, huge strides in application. So let's set this problem up in Flopzilla and say the big blind gets to the turn with this range of hands. Don't worry if you disagree with it, it's just used to highlight the process. So if we assume the big blind would only give this pot size bet action with top pair better, flush draws, and 8 out straight draws, we see they continue 30% of the time. This means that they're folding the other 70% of the time. And since 70 is higher than the 50% break even given our pot size bet, this bluff is outright profitable. The big blind is folding too often and allowing us to make a snap profit with any two cards, including our lowly 5 high. Heck, even if we thought the big blind would give our turn bet action with middle pair better, flush draws and those 8 out straight draws, we notice that they're continuing 43% of the time and thus folding 57. So 57, still higher than 50, still an outright profitable bluff, just not as profitable as the times our opponent is folding 70% of the time instead. Again, you don't use Flopzilla in real time, but the more you use this software when you're practicing and studying hands off table, the more of an inherent feel you're going to have at the table in real time. And 
and it's far better to be in the ballpark at the table than it is to have zero basis whatsoever, to be totally guessing, or worse, to derive your entire strategy based on how strong or weak your hand hit. That's not a real strategy at the end of the day, so you have to be focused on this stuff. Again, a little bit of time with Flopzilla will go a long, long way, both off and on the table. Now the third basic of bluffing is focusing on outright versus multi-street profit. And up to this point, we've really just been focused on outright profit. Essentially, is my opponent going to fold often enough based upon my bet size in order for me to show outright profit with any two junky cards? If yes, bluff, that's really easy. But if not, well, we can go a step further. And to do that, let's actually back up to the flop for a moment. Now sure, we could rerun all of this in Flopzilla and recalculate the break-even percentage, which is 37% by the way, but let's actually take a moment to take a broad strokes look at this. Say you think your opponent's only gonna fold 25% of the time, and clearly we need 37% of folds in order for this to be break, 25 is lower than that, and as such, this is not an outright profitable bluff. So while we do definitely love outright profitable bluffs, just because one isn't outright profitable doesn't mean we automatically pause and don't pull any triggers. We need to consider the effects of a multi-street play. Say the big blind is the kind of player who gives far too much respect to turn bets, and as such, they're really only giving turn barrels action with things like two pair plus. While this quality certainly doesn't describe every single player, I'm sure you can think of at least one or two in your game who tend to approach the game like this. So while that player is only folding 25% of the time to your flop C bet, you actually think they're folding maybe 80% of the time to turn barrels on all but the worst of cards. This is clearly a situation where the flop C bet is not outright profitable, but the multi-straight play definitely rates to make you money in the long run. And this is all before considering that we do have some backdoor equity on the flop that will occasionally come through and could result in us winning a nice big pot. But the important thing is don't get bogged down in the minutiae here. Don't get overly focused on the wrong variables, not our exact hole cards, not the exact texture, not the exact position, not the exact range that we're assigning the big blind. Look at the big picture stuff, the big concepts that go into this. It doesn't matter if we have a queen high bluff or a five high bluff. What goes into a good profitable bluff is what matters. Don't get lost in the minutia here. Understand what goes into making a nice profitable one and done bluff versus what goes into making a profitable multi-street attack. That's what's going to help you at the end of the day, and that's what's going to inform your lines when you're actually making real-time decisions. And the fourth and final piece of this is thinking about whether or not we need to be balanced. So not just thinking about our opponent, their range, their folding frequency, but thinking about the range that we represent and how our opponent might react to that. So a very simple example of that is let's just say that we are super, super aggressive bluffers. If that's the case, would we expect a really good player to fold very often to us? No, probably not. They're probably going to get far more sticky with any pair, and in fact, they might even start bluff raising us more often as well. So that's a situation where we may need to be concerned about what we represent in our frequencies and how our opponent is in turn reacting and making strategic adjustments. Now, truthfully, I find that most players are too focused on their own two hole cards, how those cards hit the board, and the absolute hand strike that they have. So against those kinds of players, I'm not super concerned about balancing, because whether I bluff too often, too little, or really never at all, I don't assume they're going to make strategic adjustments accordingly. So because of that, against them, it's really just a mechanical exercise when it comes to bluffing. If I find an outright profitable play, bluff. If I find a multi-street profitable play, take it. If not, Probably not then. Now, in the less likely scenario that my opponent is actually thinking about my range and will make correct strategic adjustments against them, and that's really the kicker, not only that they can identify the issue in my game, but they're going to make strategic adjustments properly. Again, some players can identify the issue, but they don't necessarily know how to make strategic adjustments. But if you find players that can identify it and adjust accordingly, it will be very difficult to find outright profitable bluffs. It'll be more difficult to find multi-street profitable bluffs. And as such, balance becomes of utmost concern. Now, balance just means that we have a proper number of bluffs in our range to start creating some indifference and difficulty in our opponent's life. It does not mean that we somehow just strip out all of our bluffs and everything goes pure, pure value. Think about how you beat someone that does that, right? What does a nit do? They bluff pretty much never, and it makes our life very, very easy. 
We don't want to give this exact same thing to our opponents, especially competent opponents that will make our life a living hell for it. So if you need to revert back to something balanced, you know, that means on the turn you can use something like one value for every one bluff combo, and on the river two value for every one bluff combo. That way you always have some bluffs in your range and you're focused on the right stuff. But again, this is all focused on players who can not only identify the shortcomings, but also adjust correctly. And truth be told, this is a, a much larger rarity than most people think it is. If you're playing live low games like 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 5, or you're playing smaller online cash games, this is something that you're probably not going to have to worry too much in terms of balance. Most of your focus is just going to be on identifying spots where people overfold, which is quite often, and then actually taking the spot when you identify it. So again, it's important to understand what balance might look like and understand when to apply it, but if you get overly lost in this and start applying balance in the spots where it's not necessarily best, you can really miss a ton of very, very profitable outright bluffs. Again, be them one and done stabs or multi-street plays. And that is bluffing in the most simplistic nutshell possible. Again, we need to memorize some basic break-even numbers, both on our bets and our raises in general. We then need to understand our opponent's folding frequency, again, using a tool like Flopzilla off-table to start getting a good feel for that. We need to start understanding what is a one-and-done bluff versus what makes a really good multi-street bluff. And then we need to understand balance and when we need to start taming down our bluffing combos. But again, if our opponents are over-folding, then we should be looking at is many bluffing combos as possible into our betting or aggression range in general. This all may seem like overload at first, especially if you're newer, but I promise you if you just study like one bluff hand per day for the next few weeks, this stuff will start to become second nature in due time. Just remember that a profitable bluff does not mean that it's going to work 100% of the time, right? Because our opponent is very rarely going to fold 100% of the time. But as long as our opponent is folding often enough and we're making enough money the times we win the pot compared to the money that we're losing the times that our bluff happens to fail and our opponent happens to wake up with a strong enough hand, that's all that matters at the end of the day. It's not a, if you make a bluff and it fails, you made a bad play, or if you make a bluff and it wins, that you made a perfect play. It's understanding what is plus EV and what is going to lose you money in the long run. If we're making a bluff that's going to make us money in the long run, that is what really matters. Now, if this topic interests you and you'd like to see a lot more exploration here, a lot more high-level analysis and bluffs both big and small, I'm considering writing a book called The Bluffing Blueprint. So if that sounds up your alley and something you'd be really, really interested in checking out, please go to splitsuit.com bluff and let me know. If enough people say, hey, I really want to see this, then I will definitely commit to writing this book for you. If not, no harm, no foul. But again, if you want to see something that's really fully dedicated to bluffing, again, big stuff, small stuff, one street stabs and multi street bluffs, let me know and I'd be happy to commit to writing it. Again, that's splitsuit.com slash bluff. Let me know right there and I'll see what I can do for you. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and I really hope this helps you focus on the things that matter most when you're studying and the things you need to focus on in real time to identify profitable bluffs again in the multi-street and the single street sense. Same as always, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know and if you wouldn't mind liking the video and subscribing as well, I would massively appreciate that as well. Again, if you need anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding. A quick way to get the...